you have three options in life. You need to either accept it, change it, or leave it. And you need to pick your path. And whatever that situation may be, whether it's a fight with a partner, how you feel about your body, if you're having health issues, you have those three distinct options in life and be very clear which one you choose. Accept it, change it, or leave it. I think you change it. Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast, where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Leslie Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world. And the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity. And it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. Oh my gosh, you guys, get ready. This conversation went everywhere, everywhere, ladies, in all the best ways. And to be honest, like I knew I wanted to have her on the show, but then we got into talking and I was like, oh, we're going to have a conversation. So we get down and dirty, ladies, about women's health and holistic health and signs and symptoms that people are getting confused and what doctors are doing and just all about, well, just, you know, how to have ease an existence, right? Like everyone talks about finding your purpose, but like sometimes you can know your purpose and then it's not easy. And ease of existence can ha- comes from like having really awesome balanced health and wellness. And so Michelle Whispel at Way of Femgevity is our guest today. Get ready, ladies. This is a good one. So here we go. All right, be it, babe. I'm super excited to finally get this interview going because I was so excited when I met Michelle Whispel Way, our guest today, um, to talk about what she's just excited to talk with you about. And then, you know, my life, (laughs) life, uh, we all got a little bit busy. And so what's so fun about it happening today is this is the exact day that you should be hearing it. It's the exact day we should be talking about it. So Michelle, will you tell everyone who you are and what you rock at? Yes. Hi, everyone. I am Michelle Wispaway. I am CEO and co-founder of Femgevity Health. We are a female longevity medicine and focusing on menopause and perimenopause treatments. I'm also a mom I'm an aunt, I'm a sister, I'm lots of other things, but you know, my sole purpose here today is that is who I am, CEO of Femgevity. Okay, so that is really cool. Our ears all perked up at female longevity and all the things. So um, I guess, how did you get into that? Because I don't know, maybe you grew up going, I'm going to be in medicine with female longevity, or I don't know, did you like stumble upon it? What was the impetus to it? Yeah, so I... My background was always, I guess, from if you want to kind of go back to um, just college years, right? And what I wanted to do, and I really wanted to be on the science back end of like diagnostics, and I loved innovation and, and medicine, and and being able to um, work with doctors to collaborate different type of treatment plans on on how their patients live healthier. Um, and that was really quickly. I learned that that just wasn't the reality of our healthcare system. It was driven by a payer system, and um, and it was very limited on what women are offered opportunity wise, especially if you are not, you know, top of the echelon of the income, be able to pay out of pocket. Um, and and through my journey of with my lab background, I really got to see and and dig in deeper on like what I wanted for myself and what I think other women would want for themselves. Um, So that's a really long story short led led me here. Uh, And I also have a very personal journey where my mom actually was really gaslit for many years on what she had symptoms, what she was told that were just menopause. Really, actually, they called it go and you're just going through your changes. Um, <laughs> I do recall and, my grandmother going through her changes. <laughs> yeah, like isn't that so so tacky? You know, it's it's like when men said, "Oh, is she on the rag." It's like yeah. that type of crap. Yes, you know, it is that type of crap. It's yeah, like just like, call like, like can't we just call it what it is? It has a name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my mom actually passed away at 51. Oh my God. That's uh, so she, young. Yeah. Yeah. She was misdiagnosed for years. Um, she had a lot of spotting and what appeared that it was her changes and fibroids. And that is exactly 
where we still are today with a lot of doctors, majority of doctors, you know, 80% of them have no training on hormones and perimenopause and menopause and just how it affects a woman's longevity, ovarian preservation, metabolic, you know, cancer prevention, things like that. Um, So I have a few, you know, caveats that have brought me to where I am today. And I, I think as a little girl, I was always very, I guess you would say neurotic where I was always like nervous and like health conscious and, (laughs) and stuff about like germs, you know, like I, I, I peed my pants all the time in uh, in kindergarten because I never wanted to sit on the toilet because I didn't want to get germs. And probably I'm probably diving into like psychological issues (laughs) that we don't need to do right now. But my point is I was very big into health and staying healthy and looking for ways to go down that route. So I think it's always inherently been in me. And just has driven me to here today. Okay. This is okay. Thank you for sharing all of that because <laughs> yes, I'm I right now, like just so many, being honest. I love it because I know I can already picture some of our listeners, I won't say their names, who like probably did the same thing when they were kids. Um yeah. I, I'm so sorry I hear about your mom. Like I have many female family members who like misdiagnose or just kind of push the wayside until it was too bad, until it was too late. Mm-hmm. People just dismissing the symptoms as being, oh, you know, like my grandmother, oh, she's just taking too many of her pain meds. And she actually had more pain meds left over than she should every month. So like, that can't be, <laughs> that's, doesn't, I don't, that's not how math works. Um, so, you know, and I, and I don't know that if she had, she did die of brain cancer, I don't know that finding out sooner would have done anything different for her type. But like, also, I think she wouldn't have spent the last few months of her life feeling like she was a crazy person, you know, being, you know, it's like, like I do think that there's some interesting things. I'm, I'm currently, I'm sure you've heard the book, Michelle, but I'm currently reading the book Eve, uh, the, the history. Oh my God, so am I. It's so good. Did, oh my God. Do you get through the section yet that men have nipples? To yes. Nurse? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Every Amazing. man, every man I meet, I'm like, you need to read this book. You're going to learn that you can breastfeed. And so there are no such thing as gender roles, in my opinion. Uh, yes. And um, also, like uh, that, there's men currently breastfeeding on the planet. Yes. <laughs> yes, there is. There was a wave of Homo sapiens that they took turns where the woman would breastfeed, or if if or she would go out to gather and hunt, and then he would nurse. Yes. It was amazing. Yes. And men, if you're listening, you can lactate still. Yes, you can. We can. We can help you. We can help you. And <laughs> also, apparently, if you got rid of your balls. You could live a longer life. Just another. Yes. <laughs> it's the first chapter had me like going, oh my gosh. I was like, Brad, you have to read this. But every person we meet, I'm like, you must read it. Every pregnant woman I meet, I'm like, hold on. You need to understand. There's some first very important things. The first two chapters go listen. <laughs> It was amazing. It's it's a great book. I actually bought it from my co-founder, Kristen, and I sent it to her last week and she's super excited to read it. And we were just talking about the nipple thing today. Yeah. It's yeah. so, it's, it's so fascinating. Uh, if, um, uh, if Kat Boeme is listening, I would love to have you on the pot anyways. I, but I loved it because she's doing this like thorough look. And as you mentioned, like you got into this, the medicine thinking like you could collaborate and it's just yes. not what happens. Those of you who live in other countries, maybe it's different for you. But if you're currently living in like a system that is like the US, it is non-collaborative. You are going to different silo doctors and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you and everyone is kind of trying to give you a pill to cover up symptoms is how I feel about it. And I'm not against medicine. I'm not against science, guys. I'm not. So don't put me in that category. But I get really frustrated because I had a massive health issue for 10 years that got exacerbated because no one would actually like work together. Like no one was mm. actually understanding. Like, and I said, I'm not sleeping very well anymore. And these things, it was just terrible. What had happened is I had definitely had some stomach issues and I stopped absorbing nutrition. And then I oh. stopped going through sleep cycles, which means I stopped producing stomach acid, which means it's no longer absorbing nutrition. And of course you're not sleeping. <laughs> Did you have H. pylori? Um, we did have that. For, I had that for a little bit. Then I don't know how long ago that was, but I do remember that one. But yeah, I just, just like literally finally got someone to listen to me and do a full, full test. Just a full one. Of course, this is where money, you have to have money to do this. So it was uh, a celebrity in the US and in, in LA. I heard what who he used to like gain weight to look like he had done like steroids, but not take steroids. And I was like, who are you doing this with? And he told me how the guy did. I was like, I'm going to go to this guy. And this guy looked at my blood and he goes, hold on. You have no stomach acid. You're like, no, what is going on? I had no testosterone at that point. 
I had, oh my gosh. yes, I had that. I mean, like, just like I had a ton of, there was like some metal in my system. Like, it was a whole mess. And I was like, this probably didn't start off this way, but it's gotten to this point because I could not get anyone to actually do an actual panel. And he's like, you don't have any vitamin D. <laughs> Like you, yeah. you know, and I was like, I don't know how it's possible. I'm driving around a Jeep with the top off. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. So, you know, it took someone like that for me to get to someone who's probably similar to you, um, who helped me like more holistically and with yes. medicine, but to look at the whole picture. So if people are feeling a little bit gaslit or feeling like a little bit like they're going crazy, what should they be looking for in the medical system? Or how do they find someone like you? Yeah. So everything you said is exactly what we do. So what makes us so different is that we take a full integrative approach. We actually take a longevity medicine approach because a woman's body at a cellular level is all these interconnected systems. The gut talks to your hormone levels, your estrogen affects your cardiovascular system, your gut affects cognitive, your skin, how you absorb nutrients. And I'll tell you a story about me in that situation too, but you need to look for doctors that aren't just spot treating, that aren't treating you just on your symptoms. And that's the problem. And and that's the problem with the US health system is that we treat on sick. We don't, we're reactive. We're not preventative. So you need to find a provider, a GYN that is going to, oh, well, you're, you're tired and fatigued. Don't just be like, oh, well, let's just do a CBC and a thyroid. Let's see what else is going on. Because if your gut is going on, you have acid, you have dysbiosis, you're not going to sleep. You're not going to absorb nutrients. You can have like GERD, a lot of different things. You're a drop in estrogen. It's going to affect your cholesterol level. So a lot of women end up going to the cardiologist because they're, you know, their LDLs through the roof or they have APOB issues. And that's actually interconnected with your whole hormonal system. It's all a web. It's not this or that. It's the whole complex picture together. And if, if your doctor doesn't do that, then you need to go. Um, because this is like, these are the patients that we see every day that come to us been like, I've seen this doctor because, you know, I, 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 you know, I've been to my internist and then she doesn't know what to do. I've been to my GYN and he said, oh, you just have to wait this out. I've been to my cardiologist because I thought I was having, you know, a heart attack because I had a stiff shoulder, but that's one of the menopause symptoms. So mm. it, it ha- you have, and that's what we do. We test, we do a full comprehensive hormone assay. We do your gut microbiome, your micronutrient level. And even your food allergy uh, allergy levels to see what type of inflammatory markers your body's reactive to with foods, because if you're fixing your gut, you kind of need to fix what's causing your inflammation from your food first before yeah. you go in and fix your gut, because that's just going to cause your gut to just inflame even more or just fire up or not yeah. absorb the nutrients and things like that. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely learned that with the with the stomach. Like if you just start to like take different things for the stomach, the way that the stomach microbiome works, if, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is like what you're eating, you kind of start to crave more of because that's what your microbiome is actually eating off of. And so if you're used to eating inflammatory foods, you've got a microbiome that's dealing with all of that. And you just go and put medicine on that. If you can change the food intake, you get more organisms down there that could help with the situation. Is that right? Yeah. 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 That's, that's definitely along the lines. And you definitely want, you know, things like oregano oil and um, and a lot of probiotics, incrementia. Um, we, I, I do a lot of things, uh, things like that. But the thing is, and, and that's the thing with like personalized medicine is what we are. Femgevity is, I can say, oh yeah, you should take that, but you shouldn't be taking anything until you have testing to see what your body needs, right? So yeah. I could be like, take take this or oregano oil and, and take this probiotic and take your incrementia, but. If, if your, your body may not need it, right? right? You know, you go to your internist and they'll say, take your vitamin D and a multivitamin and an omega. Well, how do you know what I should be taking? You know, like, I, you don't well, know what I'm missing. Right. And, and also, if your stomach isn't absorbing nutrition, is it getting <laughs> the vitamin yeah, D just that like you're <laughs> swallowing? Flushing it out. <laughs> you know, what's interesting. I was at the pediatrician with my daughter yesterday because she had strap. And she had this, like, this whatever, uh, a, a, a gland or not, whatever is we're, we're following it. And I, the, uh, cause I have access to this testing. So my daughter's like, you know, very tired and in kind of cranky and stuff like that. So I did a full micronutrient panel on her and she's going to be 11. She, her CoQ10 is low. Her vitamin C is low. Her zinc's low. Um, and her omega is low. And I'm like, this, this is why my child is cranky and she's tired and her stomach hurts. 
Um, but, and I just tested the pediatrician yesterday. I said, Oh, what do you think we, she's really tired. What do you think we should do? Do you think she's like, well, her CBC and thyroid were fine last year and she's, she's hormonal. So she's okay. And I'm like, it's exactly why you need a full integrative doctor, because if I'm listening to her, my child's going to still continue on this, this endless route of feeling worse. Yeah. Also a year ago, my dentist yeah. won't let me go more than a year without checking my teeth with an x-ray. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? I'm like, is this really necessary? Like, well, it's been a year. And I'm like, okay, like, and it's my teeth. <laughs> like yeah. your blood test, especially a young child. I, I think it's amazing that you, I mean, good for you. And also like your daughter's so lucky, but it's so interesting because now it makes me think like a lot of our people who are listening are parents and like, your child might be cranky not because they haven't slept enough, but maybe like something is off. It's vitamin. And her, she actually, I, then I also did a one step further. I did a gut microbiome and tested her poop and she had H. pylori Ugh. and that's why her stomach was hurting. So that's why it's like, you can't, you know, I have my own theories yeah. on, on certain things, but um, that's why you always need to take it like, yeah. so five steps further. When I lived in LA, it felt like so accessible to find someone like you. And now I live in Las Vegas and I'm sure it exists. I haven't looked because luckily I can just go to LA and see my person. But like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, but also can people access someone like you and live in a different part of the country? Like is what you do accessible in a, a mail order <laughs> sort, sort of thing? Like, yeah. 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 Which is great. And I should have mentioned that we are virtual healthcare. Mm. totally telemedicine convenience of your home. And that's how we're able to keep the cost down. Um, because we're not a brick and mortar, we don't have all this crazy overhead and we're able to offer this type of concierge care and precision medicine to women all over the country. That's so um, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is. And okay. So that's amazing. So we can do telemedicine people all over the country can access you. And so let's say they do have someone that they trust or they they want to test their own doctors like they're not they're not ready for telemedicine are they testing the doctors to just cuz i had a doctor that i totally tested and i got really mad at her and then i got an email or a letter that said she's out of network now i'm like thanks i didn't want to see her anyways yeah. um she i was like i want to get these things tested on my hormones and she said oh you can't test those they change all day long and i was like oh my god <laughs> And I was like, sorry, I'm, I'm, they test exists for a reason. It means you can. And if you know how to read them based on where I'm on my cycle and I do know where I am my cycle, you should know. And she was like, well, I could order it, but it's just not going to say anything. And I was just like, it's not your money. And I don't want you to have the results. So no, but like, what should people be asking their doctors to see if the doctor they have is someone that they can trust or work with or who is going to do the whole thing? Yeah. So a couple of things I would Get all your hormones, progesterone, estrogen, make sure they're looking at your cortisol, your insulin levels, make sure they're looking at your lipids, make sure they're looking at your DHEA, your AMH, because you want to actually check your ovarian aging levels. If they have access to it, I would order a lot of like heavy metals, C, D, magnesium, mercury. You do a lot of amino acids and antioxidant testing. Uthionine testing is really good. We're big advocates of testing for that. If gut microbiome testing and make sure they're doing H pylori. It, you really have to test from the stool. Yeah. Doing bloods is just for H pylori purposes. It's it just not because it lives in your intestinal tract and stuff like that. Food allergy testing, but just there's specific labs that do PCR DNA sequencing too. So you also have to ask them like, what labs are you using? What's the methodology? And I know that's like not every, something everyone wants to go into, but at the very least, um, have them do a very full comprehensive hormone assay, your thyroid, your FSH, your LH, prolactin, um, estradiol, do it all. Well, okay. So everyone, don't worry. The show is transcribed. It's on the blog <laughs> and you can copy and paste. <laughs> we have a lot of information on our website and blogs. Oh, okay. um, my uh, co-founder does a ton of like, uh, videos where she talks about things a lot hormonal wise, cause she does a lot of our medical protocols, and, you know, it, yeah, so that you could find that all there, not to be weary, but, and also women in their thirties, you should be getting your levels tested because you want a baseline. Yeah. You want to know what you are now. So when you're like in your forties and your levels are this, you could compare them to what they were 
Because even if you're like feeling, oh, am I feeling good? Am I feeling not? You know, you're like able to guide yourself very closely and almost like prevent yourself from, from symptoms and, and being able to live symptom free before it hits. Yeah. And I actually want to chat about that. Cause like one of my girlfriends, you know, she, she's going through the changes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I was going to say, it. no. So she's, you know, she's 10 years older than me and she, you know, was assuming she is, go- is perimenopausal and was just all these different things were happening. And she, it was also slowly over time. And I was like, I think you might want to just talk with your doctor about like really, truly like looking into why are you so tired all the time? Why are you having these aches and pains? Why is your hip bothering you? Like you have a, this it, it's, you're, it's not cause you're 50. <laughs> it's not just cause you're 50, right? Like yeah. you, if you're going to live to 80, this is early. It's too early to go through all these pain points. So she finally like really sought something out and like went for it. And then they gave her some hormones because her hormones were off. And she's like, holy moly, Leslie, I was so like, I feel like I am unstoppable. And I was like, for years, she's been slowly over time managing it and air quotes, managing it. And I think that we are trained from, I don't know, just society that like, it's, we'll just manage it. We'll just figure it out. We'll just do it later. And like, it's actually okay to demand that you feel really good all of the time, especially if you're doing all the things, if you're moving your body, if you're trying to sleep, if you're, if you're like trying to drink the clean water, like all the things like you should ideally feel good. Yeah. It's been very just highly accepted and overrated that you just have to kind of deal with it. And it's a part of aging and you're supposed to be tired or you're supposed to have an ache or pain. That is not supposed to be how you're supposed to feel. I'm 43 and I feel better now than when I felt in my 30s. And you know, I, I actually have more energy because you're just more aware of how you're supposed to take care of yourself. So, you know, imagine if like younger women start understanding how they're supposed to feel and start feeling even more energetic in their 30s. And as you build up and progress, you're just going to keep feeling better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, be able to get up from the floor when you're 75 and, and play with your grandkids. Yeah. And have the energy too. It's not just the, the strength too, but also all of the things that go with it. Okay. You mentioned something that like piqued my interest. You said someone had a shoulder issue and they were mm-hmm. there. So, and, and it was perimenopausal, not, um, not a heart attack or whatever yes. you said. Are there any other symptoms like that that we should be aware of that like we may be perimenopausal, but we might think are something else because I, or maybe I'm just open up a can of worms because I feel like, oh, like perimenopause, unfortunately, menopause has not been studied nearly enough. Um, mm-hmm. I got really pissed off. Did you hear this? There was a daily episode probably six months ago where this one scientist was trying to get research money for menopause and the way he was able to get actual funding from people for his testing that he wanted to do was to, to, turn the title to like, well, if women stop turning into men, then their husbands would want them longer. So if we can keep them women longer, and that's how he got the funding. And I was so irritated that that's how money, (laughs) I was like, absolutely, we should have been studying this already. (laughs) Yeah. So (sighs) disgusting. So infuriating. He got money for it. And so yay. Of course he did. (laughs) But also like, unfortunately, we haven't been studying this long enough. And so we don't know enough. Everything I've ever been told is that you just have hot flashes and that you gain weight. <laughs> but like you just mentioned yeah. a whole symptom I've never heard of before. So like, what are some of those sim- things that might people might be putting off that could actually have to do with like a hormone change happening? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So a stiff shoulder, like a frozen shoulder, itchy ears, a ringing in the ear. Some women become like, like kind of like vertigo, um, off balanced. There's, I mean, there's a hundred plus symptoms. Wow, that's very, crazy. Those are the ones bizarre. you listed are like, I was like, oh, I trip a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you know, you're, and you know, you're like, do I have a brain tumor? Is, you know, like there's some very serious symptoms. Um, you know, women have like weird, just like pains that, you know, you, you start pulling things easier just because you have a higher likelihood for um, b- bone fractures and osteoporosis. So there's much easier breakage. And there's a lot of, a lot of women end up like having like a slip disc or like, you know, like a, a joint pain or a pull a, like a, something in their shoulder. And you hear, if you list, start paying attention and listening, like more women in 
the 40s, 50s, and 60s will be like, oh, I went to the chiropractor or the acupuncture, or my back's acting up again. And you ask them, what, well, what did you do through perimenopause? Especially if it's a woman in her, in her 60s, I bet you it's she didn't do anything when she was going through perimenopause and menopause. And now it's catching up to her big time. Oh, okay. So this yeah. is interesting. Okay. So now Especially, I'm like, the whole so depletion in testosterone uh, is like maintaining your levels of, of testosterone. Testosterone is huge for women. Your body composition is made up of much more testosterone than it is of any other hormone. We just have a smaller formula of it in our body, formula of comp- composition of it. Yeah. 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 That's what, that's the one that like, I'm going to be really honest with everyone listening. I have been trying for years to maintain that level. I mean, I lift the heavy weights. I'm now, I take a CJC, which is not really for testosterone, but like it's supposed to help me just feel good. Uh, but like, I cannot keep that level up to a number that is anything better than below average. <laughs> and I'm like, do I just need to actually take testosterone? And I'm like, oh my God, my grandmother had a beard. So like, I haven't gone down that no, rabbit hole. No, it doesn't cause hair. I mean, unless you're like rubbing it on your, on your, on your lip and you want a beard, then, you know, hell go for it. It's whatever. It's 2024. But, um, you know, I, you know, I, I, listen, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not the medical provider and the clinician, but there's could be a lot of things for you. Like who knows what your progesterone level is. I don't know if you're on a Marina IUD that's causing progestin mm-hmm. and you're getting an over an estrogen dominance and then stripping your testosterone. So there's like a lot of different things. I, I think you're probably younger than me. So these are all these factors that are like all integrated and like a lot of physicians don't understand that and they don't think about it. So if you can't maintain your testosterone levels, there's, there's a reason why it doesn't, just not because just because like, yeah. you know, you don't. Yeah. So just like, think about those things are interesting. Yeah. I also just, I want to just highlight something you're, you've done. You guys all have to listen to this. Every time something has come up, she has mentioned that there's more than like, it's not just like this or this. Like there's this, and then also there's a few other things that this could be going on. And I think that's so important. You're anytime you're with a medical provider, they, there needs to be a holistic look at things because otherwise they're putting a bandaid on something or they could make something worse because it's totally off. Like they could be trading you for a heart attack and you could have very menopause. Did you? 1,000%. Yeah. Did you read Halle Berry's uh, doctor mistook her perimenopause for like, gonorrhea like a bad case of gonorrhea i know <laughs> i was like i don't even know I mean, how that happens I got you know, like imagine i mean the poor woman she probably has such vaginal dryness and like you know god only knows what's going because there's a lot of stuff goes on down there you know you like you lose your atrophy and your you have collagen in there and, and it starts thinning out and and then what you know why you know why he probably thought that because she probably had persistent UTIs because women, when they're, they start losing their testosterone, they got a lot of vaginal dryness and it's a lot of reoccurring UTIs. So he, she probably, he probably kept on testing her for STDs. And if only would he, he would have given her some bioidentical estrogen, her vagina would have felt a lot better. And the poor thing wouldn't have been accused of gonorrhea. Oh, oh my God. It's- and I, I'm from like the, the lab world, right? So like, Doctors order, you know, urine cultures constantly. If any woman's like, you know, oh, I have a pain or an itch or something. They're like, oh, do you have a UTI or is it BV? You know, they don't think that like, oh, well, maybe you have some hormonal thing going on. They don't even test your hormones. Like at your annuals, they don't look at anything. It's not even a part of like the health insurance. You have to do its preventative codes. The, the only thing is preventative is a PAP, not even HPV. That's like considered diagnostics. It's like, it's yeah. absurd. Oh, I know. So I have, so I have. So I get very, pa- I get very. I, no, I am too. I'm really excited <laughs> for this conversation. Like, so, okay. Cause this will just like horrify you. So when I had, when I was put on birth control in high school, I went on the patch cause I was like, yeah, I'll put this on. Cause I don't have to do a pill at the same time like every a, day. A pirate. Right? Yeah. Like a pirate <laughs> patch. It was like, you could put it on your arm, on your hip or whatever. Of course you guys, you guys, I can't wear a band aid. Okay. Not longer than a day. I have to switch the bandaid out. So of course, like every time I took this patch off, I had like a red square, super sexy. Like everybody wants to be <laughs> near that. And so like, I had to keep moving the patch around. <laughs> Anyways, I just like was, but I was like, no, I don't want to be on the pill. Cause I don't have to remember to take anything. And I was supposed to like low hormone, the whole thing. Like you won't get a blood clot. Cause it's like, it's like easy the way the, all the things I was told. Right. So fast forward two years in, I'm in a car accident. I'm on bed rest for a week. I get off bed rest and my leg is super swollen and it's getting hot. 
and I am it's and I'm at work and it's now throbbing. And so I go to an urgent care and I was like, I think I have a blood clot. And he's like, no. And I was like, I can't sleep because I'm in so much pain. And I watched an infomercial on a blood clot. I think I have one. I have all the symptoms. And the guy's like, you're too young for blood clot. Kid you not. Too young for blood clot. Ice and elevate your leg. You were in a car accident a week ago. It's swollen from that. I was like, this person doesn't is not listening to me. And the worst thing I can do is elevate this leg. So <laughs> I went to work because I had to go back and I, you know, unfortunately had to pay my own bill. So go to work and it's now getting bigger. You guys, I, my leg was like twice the size of my other. It was, it felt, I mean, maybe it wasn't that big, but it felt that big. So I then went to um, the emergency room and I walk in and I'm like, well, limping in because I can barely work my leg. And the nurse goes, oh my God, I think you have a blood clot. And I was like, thank you. I think so too. So sure enough, I have blood clot. So after I'm in the hospital, um, um, I was pulled off of birth control, not by my gynecologist from then, but from a different one who looked at my history and was just like, oh, she's like, I think you might be susceptible to clotting based on your family's history. You should not be on these hormones. And so I got on the copper IUD, which of course made my periods the worst thing in the world yeah. forever. <laughs> Bloody murder. For, for, for fucking ever. So, but anyways, I don't have children. And at the time I was single. So here we are. So have this uh, copper IUD. And aside from the bad periods, no problems whatsoever. It was pretty easy. Everything was like on time. Go to get it removed. And I had moved. And uh, no one could find it. And they, so I'm at Planned Parenthood. They can't find it. They're like, I'm like, well, it's in there. I'm telling you right now, it's, the, I know it's there. I can feel it's there. Right. So you got to like, so sure enough, I got my insurance to cover a visit with a gynecologist and she finds it with what an, an, an ultrasound or sonogram, whichever the one is. And it's like in the, I guess it's like in the uterus and it was like off to the side and turned around. So the, the, the strings were facing the wrong way. So they had to go oh in God. with a camera and this is what piss you off. My, even though she could find it that day, my insurance would not let her oh. remove it that day. <laughs> I had to come back for another visit to have it removed. And I was, and she was like, I would do it. But I'm like, can't you just like say I came back another day? <laughs> like, I'll I sign know. it. <laughs> I'll just, I'll sign, I swear. So anyways, I had that removed. It's now been out for almost two years. Best thing I ever did is like I have nothing. It's like, and and I'm so cyclical. It's I'm on time all the time. It's amazing. But it's just the the comedy of errors <laughs> of like what I would, it's a lot. So, you know, I share all that with you because like, ladies, if you're listening, it's you're not the only one. Even if you are advocating for yourself and even if you're trying to educate yourself, it can be really difficult to navigate the medical system to get help for yourself. It really is, especially the payer system. And it's more difficult now because a lot of independent physicians are being bought by hospital systems and payer networks because they can't afford to stay in business because, you know, the the, the inflation, right? It's the cost to operate, but the reimbursements are going down. Yes. Um, and there's only so many, you know, insurances that you can go out a network with. So you're just being, it, it just an intertwine of being more caught up in the system. Yeah. And that's why, you know, we are so adamant on, you know, doing what we do and so passionate about it because, you know, being in the lab industry and Kristen had her own practice for many, many, many years, we know what the payer system is and prevents from women living longer, healthier lives. It, it just doesn't allow it. So there needs to be companies like Femjavity and, and, and others to be able to provide these opportunities to live longer and healthier and vibrant and build like an ecosystem and, and a community support where women could be like vulnerable and talk to each other about these things. Cause it's embarrassing, you know, and not yeah. everyone like wears everything on their sleeve, you know? So yeah, I have some um, girlfriends who are like, they're like, I know I talk about perimenopause all the time. I'm like, you should, I don't know anything about it. No one in my, my life talked about it. So they talk about it after it's over. So I would like, I think it's important that we hear these things. I want to go into some things though before, cause like you've given us so much, but I feel like you are providing something to be unique and to be this different and to get into the world you're trying to get through all around all the different obstacles. And there's just all these different things that would probably keep femgemity from working. How do you have that kind of resilience? How do you stay in line with your purpose? Like what is it that you practice every day? <laughs> because it's, it can't be easy to have this vision and this idea and know what you can do to change women's lives and also know how hard it is for them to get to you. Yeah. So, you know, I think the biggest part of me is, you know, I, I've been through a lot and 
um, I'm not afraid of failure. And you can't take risks and and you can't grow as a person if you're afraid to fail. And um, and and that's, you know, failure really brings success and it brings um it brings a system and and you know, a person who's been like kind of knocked out of phase is resilience is really like the strongest factor that contributes to a survival of a system and possibility to really reach your full potential. And I think what's helped me is to really live by like a system, right? And and because it, like a structure in life is a bunch of like interconnected systems, like we say with longevity, right? With with finding healthcare and and once you see that, it's when harmony and energy truly evolve, and you get closer to your goals. Mm-hmm. Um, and you really get to this like perpetual state where you get to this like paradox world of having deeper clarity of, of what you want and to achieve. And I just feel that, you know, it, the purpose of it is to like live with high energy, effortless existence, because at the end, end of the day, you have limited amount of capacity and it drains, you know, it drains you because it's like decision-making stress, what you're eating, how you're sleeping and having like an optimized system on how you go about life, the more you're going to get out of it. And there's going to be like, there's going to be dysfunction in life in general. And like believing that, you know, just because you have dysfunction means it's not possible to be happy. And it just helps you to drive to like more essentialism and and making it your own ecosystem Mm. and like a better quality of life. Before we were recording, you're talking about effortless existence. I will say like life can be so hard. And then as we've talked about all the different things that we could control with our health. If everything was in balance, I think it'd be so much easier to show up as an effort (laughs) in effortless existence. You know what I mean? I feel like if you have all these different hormones that all your, you know, happy hormones that are like actually leveled out, like you probably probably be easier to show up and, and be in the world. (laughs) Yeah. It's, you know, it's effortless. It's easier to, to deal with like the obstacles because you get out of bed and you're hit with your kids or your work and an email and, and just like constant things that can really just like, just set you over the edge, over the cliff, you know, where you want to like have a nervous breakdown. But if you're balancing your health, that's, what's going to keep you on a straight and narrow road where you're not going to be having huge spikes where it's going to make you want to drop down too far. Yeah. I can totally see how that works out. Cause I do have a lot of people who are like, Leslie, I'm doing all the things. I have my dream schedule designed. And I'm like, I've got, you know, I'm doing all the things for my business, but like these things happen and I just want to quit. I just want to give up. And it's like, well, first of all, there's, as you mentioned, like got to get over, you got to go with the failure. You can't be afraid of failure. You've got to do that. And I think, especially when you're feeling exhausted and tired, you can't, it's so a failure feels really hard. <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, it, it really is. And granted, like you know, running a startup, there's a lot of failures <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh my gosh, do I suck at life? Or is this just a bad day? But I'm like, no, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to learn and not make that decision again, you know? And, um, and it's hard to get in that mindset, especially when you're like, you know, yeah. having a bad day. Yeah. So, okay. I do. I mean, I think being okay with failure is what resilience really is. It's like, how did you get good at how did you get get okay with failure? Is it because you practice medicine and medicine is really a practice or is it like, were you raised that way? Like, cause I feel like so many people, our listeners are super perfectionists. That means no failure is ever allowed. So how did you get good at being okay with failure? I think I, once I learned to have confidence in myself and to trust my own decisions and, and I think I also started to become more balanced with, um, being intentional and trusting my instincts. Um, I think once I grew into that and, you know, throughout my like professional career, it was, it was hard. You, you had a, you know, it was grinding it out. It was a very male dominated industry. Um, and I second guessed myself a lot. And a lot of those second guesses that I had where I didn't listen to my gut, I made bad decisions. So I think, <laughs> I know this sounds ridiculous, but I got there from making my mistakes and getting back up. And I, um, just kind of like no mercy. I think it was also like the way my, my dad brought me up. He was very tough. He was, you know, like he was, he was in the military and stuff like that. So, um, I think it's the way I grew up 
Mm-hmm. And just growing up with like divorced parents and things like that, um, you just just mentally tough, you know, biking blood. I <laughs> <laughs> but I think that like thanks for sharing that because I do think that so many people can see maybe they grew up with divorced parents like you or they had all the uh, tough parents or all these things and they don't realize that they have this like superpower of resilience that they could be taking with them into things. Like, yes. You know? You know what? That's what it is. You have to find your superpower. And my superpower is resilience and to um, work under fire. Yeah. And if you if you embrace your superpower and your superpower can be like lying compulsively, who cares? That's your superpower and own it, but find to use it in a good way, not to like, you know, hurt people, yeah. but you know, like Superman. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Michelle, this has been so good. You are amazing. We're gonna take a brief break and we can find out where people can find you, work with them and Gemini. All right, Michelle, where can people find you and work with you? They could find us on femgevityhelp.com. Our social handle is at femgevity. We are on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, um, LinkedIn. And um, we have live text and chat on our website too, if ladies have any questions. Mm, so good. Okay, you guys, go check it out. I'm I'm going to. Uh <laughs> going to get down. We're going to figure out this testosterone thing. Um, We're going to figure it out. <laughs> so We're going to figure that out for you. This is the year. This is the year I'm doing it. Um, okay. You've and given, no mustaches. We're not going to give you a mustache. <laughs> but can, can you, can you, can you can understand why I've, de- why I've delayed it right so long? I'm like, oh, I don't know. My grandmother had like a beard. <laughs> we won't give you a beard. We'll just give you chest hair. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm dying. My grandmother's probably up there going, "Are you? Have you lost your mind?" <laughs> Anyways, okay. So you've given us so much already. Bold, executable, intrinsic, or targeted steps people can take to be it till they see it. What do you have for us? Okay, you have three options in life. You need to either accept it, change it, or leave it. And you need to pick your path, and whatever that situation may be, whether it's a fight with a partner how you feel about your body. If you're having health issues, you have those three distinct options in life and be very clear which one you choose. Accept it, change it, or leave it. I think you change it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love these because that can be everything that's coming up. And also you can also say, I'm going to leave it on until this date and then I'm going to change it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are like your your rocks, you know, where we we actually have company rocks where we set what at each quarter in the beginning of the quarter we set our goals, personal and professional, and then we go back 3 4 months later and go and reevaluate them. Mm-hmm. So you can you can leave it now and change it in 3 months. Yeah. Yeah. But don't ever accept it. Like your health and what doctors are telling you because there's always a way. Yeah. Maybe no for now, but not no for later. Yeah. I love that. I love that. No accepting it when it comes to your health, you guys. You guys can now reach out to Michelle and Femgevity because what you created for women is so cool. The fact that it can be telemedicine. I'm just so, I'm so excited for everyone listening. All right, y'all, how are you going to use these tips in your life? Make sure you tag Michelle, make sure you tag the be a pod, share this. Okay. So here's my action plan for you. The only way women actually can get the help that they want is if they know what this need to ask for. Okay. So if doctors, we're hearing questions from their patients who actually were like, I did the research here, the tests I want. It's the only way we can get them to change, or at least for you to know that that's not the doctor you need. For, we can. I think that women are so powerful that if we rose up together and demanded that professionals take care of us holistically, it's the only way it's going to change things. Until then, you can go see Michelle. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but um, so share this with your with a friend who needs to hear it because you're not crazy. There's nothing, it's not something wrong with you. They just haven't figured it out yet. And it's because you know a holistic look at it. So thank you all so much, Michelle. Thank you so much for what you've done here. Thank you. This has been so amazing. Yeah, so awesome. All right, loves. Until next time, be it till you see it. That's all I got for this episode of the Be It Till You See It podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review. And follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day.
The It Till You See It is a production of the Bloom Podcast Network. If you want to leave us a message or a question that we might read on another episode, you can text us at plus one three one zero. 905-5534 or send a DM on Instagram at be it pod. It's written, filmed, and recorded by your host, Leslie Logan, and me, Brad Crowell. It is transcribed, produced, and edited by the epic team at Desenio.co. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music, and our branding by designer and artist Gianfranco Chofi. Special thanks to Melissa Solomon for creating our visuals. Also to Angelina Herico for adding all of our content to our website. And finally, to Meredith Root for keeping us all on point and on time.